Think about it. Now, what could you have done in the past? Let's not worry about that. Why do I say that? Because you wouldn't drive your car by looking in a rearview mirror. So why would you live your life that way? Let's drop it. Let's go forward. Let's be proactive. Let's be actioneers. This is the word that I coined, actioneers. I was just hoping that maybe one day we could get the actioneers in Webster's Dictionary. You know, black folks get words in Webster's Dictionary. Unfortunately, it's words like bling bling and bootylicious, but you know, if we can somehow begin to have a more affluent concept, you see what I'm saying? You know, let's don't let the system continue to make us look like buffoons. Let's make the system recognize that we, in our DNA, our DNA is the oldest and richest DNA on the face of the earth. Our DNA comes from the origin of man. Every person who looks at the history of the origin of the man understands that it's from Africa. That means that your DNA, the DNA that runs in you, you see, you are not just, you are not just your parent's child. You don't just carry their DNA. The cellular memory that's within you comes from the origin of man, which is God. That means that your DNA comes from the Holy Father and your DNA is within you, so your spirituality has to be within you. So when you come here and you recognize or you get the Holy Ghost, where is that coming from? It's not coming from there, it's coming from within you. Am I making sense? Sometimes I think I'm here by myself, I'm not sure. But, but I, and I'm not a preacher, I am, you know. I'm here to speak on a secular basis, but I have to blend in the reality of our origin. Does that make sense? Because you never know why is it that you can do certain things. Michael Jordan's parents, who were just this small, <clears throat> he became the greatest basketball player of his time. How is it the little girl can get a, on a piano at, at, at age four and play Beethoven and Mahler? And what is that? That's cellular memory that's in your DNA. See, you have the strength and the power of your spiritual father within you. Go get it. Quit resisting. If you have a business mind, if you have an opportunity, regardless of the size, don't let somebody else you know, tell you, well, it's not big enough or it's not strong enough or you can't get the financing. Access to capital exists in business. Venture capital, angel capital, families connecting together to raise the money that's necessary. On the, in the internet environment, you don't really need a lot of money. You just need intellect. You just need to go after it. And that's what I want you to realize, that you have eliminated the fear of failure today. And I always have fun with this one. How many of you think outside the box? Raise your hand. Uh, there's a few of you that may have heard me say this before. Because those who raise their hand, I'm going to spank you. If you're thinking outside of the box, doesn't that presume that you are in a? Oh, I say, Michael, maybe you hurt me too hard that time. I... <laughs> but understand the concept. We're, we're speaking philosophically here, metaphorically here. But when you think about what I just said, you maybe have to step back for a moment and say, you know what? You're right. I have allowed myself to be in a box. Now, I don't know how big that box is. You only know that. I know this, there's some kids in jail today that the cell was the size of their box. But I know that there's no such thing as a box. There's only the horizon. There's only the opportunities that you present for yourself to yourself. How do you become great? Well, there was a great baseball player here, Hank Aaron. Anybody remember Hank Aaron? Yeah. At one time, he was the leading home run hitter. Well, we think of his home runs, but we never stop and think about how many strikeouts he had. But you see, Hank had the courage to step into the batter's box and wait for that right ball. And when he hit his home runs, everybody cheered but he struck out a lot more times than he hit home runs. And that may be the case with our life, that there may be a few times that we aren't able to achieve as we would have liked, not a failure, 
because we stepped into the batter's box. In business, every day you have to step into the batter's box. Once you get employees, you have to step into the batter's box. When the banks aren't cooperating, you still step into the batter's box because you never know when that ball is gonna come when you're gonna hit that big home run. And you're going to hit them over and over and over, only if you step in the batter's box. So when Noah was told to organize, Noah then realized that it was going to take a team effort to make it happen. And uh, as I said, he didn't go out to learn how to swim by himself. He created the ark and he created a concept that allowed for others to come on board. Now, if I were Noah, I'd be probably charging admission tickets, but that's because I'm a capitalist. Uh, <laughs> but you see my point, I hope. That I just want us to recognize that we get messages sent to us. Let's read them, let's understand them. When the bishop speaks, let's listen to him. He's a very wise man. And every wise man Every wise man has to go through the fire. Those of us who are on the point, it's happened to me. And it happens in the strangest ways, and it happens from the weirdest corners, and, and from the people that you thought were so close to you, so on your side, so ready to support you. And yet, it happens. But. We have to prepare ourselves all the time because those adversities will come. It's expected. But because we take every moment to its fullest extent and we don't look back, but we look forward and we enjoy the presence, then we can fulfill our lives. Does that make sense? Amen. So as you look at our businesses, I, I made a decision recently. I was gonna buy a hotel in Detroit 40% unemployed. Uh, some of the toughest school districts uh, in the country. They're, the governor up there is, in another week or two, is going to take, uh, sign a bill that's going to take the residential assistance away from poor folks. In 48 months, uh, the $540 that you might be using for rent, if you're in the 40 at the end of the 48 months, that goes away. Now what's gonna happen? And it's retroactive, so if you started 47 months ago in month one, you're gonna lose it. They have begun to con consolidate schools and they're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of from 30 students per classroom to 60 students per classroom. How much can we take? but we're resilient people. So when I went up and I looked at this hotel, people scratched their head, I guess I did too, and they said, why Detroit? Why would you buy a hotel or bring a business in Detroit? Well, number one, Detroit has 713,000 people. They used to have three million, but they're all African American. And my thoughts were, hmm, so this is a city that has more African Americans than any other city in the world outside of Africa. And we have people who are looking to bring their city back. So why not this brother come in with his money, buy the hotel, a hotel that had gotten boarded up, it was the Omni Hotel, it was on the riverfront, one of the most beautiful locations in the state of Michigan but the Omni folks pulled out. I stepped in one month later within four months. I took those boards off. The 72 people that lost jobs, most of them were able to get reemployed. And today we have one of the strongest, nicest, most beautiful hotels in the country.